So it jumped from like 80 degrees to 40 basically overnight and I'm not really mad about it. I love that the cold weather is back and the leaves are starting to change and I'm so happy it's fall. I have quite a few books and manga to go over because this is going to be a combination of the end of August and all of my September reads, so prepare yourself. I was struggling so hard trying to get that thumbnail. It's ridiculous. So to start out, the first thing that I read was Maggie Volume 37 by Shinobu Otaka, and that means I officially finished the series and I'm so <laughs> happy. I have been speaking about this for ages on my channel now. I've been slowly reading them as it's being released in English, and I have not been very happy with the final arc. Maggie is a manga series that's an Arabian Nights retelling, and it follows this group of friends on their adventure. In the beginning, the plot is much more small scale and more focused on the characters, and the character work in that is incredible. You care about these characters so much. You can see their development and you can watch them grow as people. Their interactions and their friendships are so entertaining and you just want to follow them everywhere. So I really love the beginning couple arcs, but the last arc I really did not like at all. I did not like the ending. It was too ridiculous and over the top and absolutely crazy. It got onto such a large scale that it didn't even make any sense anymore and everything got so convoluted and messed up. The art was a lot harder to follow as well. Actually, throughout the series, the art is kind of hard to follow for me. I'm not used to reading shonen battle type manga, so I didn't really know what was happening in all of the fight scenes and I couldn't really tell who was hitting what and what was happening, what was fire, what was water. I was so confused that whole time, so that wasn't really a pleasant experience for me. I haven't read any other shonen manga, so I don't know if that's true across all of them or if it's just this particular art style that I couldn't make sense of. Maybe I'm just not used to it. That could be true too, because all I read is shoujo. But the reason I picked up this manga in the first place was because I love the anime. And I will say right now that I definitely think the anime is better than the manga. Even though the anime doesn't finish the story, <laughs> I said I don't like how the story finishes. So what you get in the anime is actually the good bits, and it's done really well. Everything's much easier to follow in the action scenes when they're all in color and they're not as compact and detailed as they are in the manga. And I mean, I love the series so much that I've watched all of Maggie and all of Sinbad, the spin-off series, twice through. So it's still something I recommend, and if you're used to shonen manga, maybe you'll like the manga. I personally think the anime is better. I am so glad that the series is over though. It got very cheesy at the end, and I was just so over it. I wanted to see it through to the end because I was so close to finishing it by the time I was getting annoyed with it. And I love the characters so much that I needed to know what happens. But now that it's done, I am so happy that I don't have to put up with it anymore. Next, I read The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, and this follows a war orphan as she tries to improve her life by going to the most prestigious military school in the land. It's set in an Asian-inspired fantasy land with magic and gods and a lot of war strategy. Most people in their reviews focus a lot on the war aspects and the school aspects, but there is actually magic in there too. I don't know why I didn't really register that there was going to be magic in this series even though it is like a fantasy world. There is definite magic in here and I thought the magic system was actually really interesting. I assume it has cultural ties with Chinese history, but I definitely remember learning in school about Native American history and how they would use like hallucinogenics to try and reach like a higher field and discover the meaning of life. And so it's very similar to that, the way that the magic ties in, and I thought that was really interesting and not something that I've seen done before. I love the world. I always love Asian inspired fantasy worlds. I think they're so interesting and I don't see them enough. I need more of them in my life. And all of the characters were really colorful and entertaining. The main character is extremely spunky and driven and she definitely has some strong opinions. I loved watching the character development in the side characters. The main character also grows and changes quite a lot throughout the book, which was fascinating to watch from her mind because she makes some very controversial <laughs> decisions throughout the book and 
The way that she comes to these conclusions and to these decisions makes sense logically because you're in her head and you can see the rationale for it while at the same time you know it's still a bad decision so it makes for this really interesting dichotomy. Like most people say, the plot is very disparate. You go from a school setting to a really dark war setting. It's very violent. It doesn't shy away from reality or history since a lot of this wartime section is based on actual events in history with the Chinese Opium Wars. And there is a massive climax ending. It leaves you so shocked and I think that's why most people in their reviews don't really know what to say about this book because it's just so completely shocking that your mind goes blank. Like you literally can't think about how you feel about the story because you're just in shock over what happens at the end. That was me at least for a couple days after I finished that book, which I sort of binged in a couple sittings. I was very, very nervous to go into this book in the beginning. I really could not get into it because I was scared of all of the violence that people were saying is in it. But after a certain point, I just couldn't stop reading. Once I'd got myself to actually sit down and start reading it and get into the story, I didn't want to stop at all. The violence is still there, but it's not gratuitous in any way, and I think it does make an impact on the story in a way that makes it necessary. I will say that there were some small editing issues and like sentence structure issues. I actually gave this book to my dad to read and he's finding it very hard to come to terms with the modern tone that the author takes because I think his mind is in, it's like an ancient Chinese story and then they're talking as if they're like modern teenagers, which is just the wrong mindset to begin with because it's not historical fiction or anything. It's a completely new fantasy world, so they can talk however the heck they want. But I don't know, that's bothering him. It might bother you, just letting you know. But if you haven't read it yet and you want this huge epic fantasy world with real consequences and a misguided but sympathetic main character, I would definitely recommend it. I need to get my hands on the second book and I haven't gotten it yet because Library holds are so long and it's so frustrating, but I will be reading that very very soon Then I started to get into a manga mood So I picked up Kuzu no Honkai or Scum's Wish by Mengo Yokoyari at this point I have read 26 out of the 47 chapters So I'm about halfway through the series and it's about two high school students who have crushes on older people that they can't have So they turn to each other for physical comfort. This manga series is full of bad decisions. These characters are so flawed. I mean, you can tell from the synopsis that these aren't the most morally straight characters out there. They're not terrible people, but they make the wrong decisions because they're young and they're experiencing love and frustration for the first time. And it's definitely a different take on this sort of shoujo romance than I'm used to seeing. It's fascinating being in their heads and seeing what their thought process is, again, for these terribly misguided decisions that they're making, but the way that they get to it makes some logical sense, but it's not a series that I can binge because after a certain point, I just start to feel really gross, which is a new sensation for me, but the art is really pretty and really pleasant, even if the things that are happening in the story are not so much. But I will be finishing the series. It's not that long and I'm halfway through it. I am reading it on the Crunchyroll manga app, which is just really, really bad. So that's unfortunate, but I mean, it's a legal method, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> so after having enough of Scum's Wish, I wanted something really pure and sweet. So I turned to Kimi ni Toroke, or From Me to You, by Karo Hoshina, which I checked out the entire series from the library, and I have all of them right now, and it's just gonna be a real struggle. Oh my god. Okay, nope. Mmm, this is so heavy. Ah. Yeah. Oh god. So yeah, I have all of them and I read all of them. <laughs> like I said, I like to binge my manga series. I need to- no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Bad idea. Let's just- I guess I will take <laughs> the third volume and put these away because this is a nightmare waiting to happen. All right. Okay, they 
they can just chill there for now. So this is an absolute classic shoujo series, classic high school love. It's one of the first anime I ever watched, and it's just the sort of sweet and pure that I needed after Scum's Wish. This follows a girl named Sawako who sort of looks like a character from a horror movie, and she's a little bit odd and she doesn't know how to interact with people, so she got the nickname Sadako and everyone thinks that she has creepy powers and she's gonna curse you. So she's very isolated, but she sees her classmate Kazehaya, who is a ray of sunshine and everyone flocks to him. He's super popular and super happy all the time, and she wants to be like him. And this is about their little romance and her learning to interact with other people and make friends. The friendship in here between Sawako and Chizu and Ayane is the best part. It is so sweet and strong and uplifting and so supportive. There's no stupid drama that breaks them up for no reason. I mean, a little bit in the beginning, but as soon as you're over that in like the third or fourth volume, it's completely solid the whole way through and I love that so much. It's so nice to see supportive friends and supportive powerful women as friends. It really it makes me happy. Going more into each of the side characters, I loved the interaction between Chizu and Ryu. I remember in the beginning I just wanted more and more of them. I wanted to see more cute moments of them just being cute together. What we ended up getting was a little bit more drama filled than I would have liked and definitely much more drawn out than I would have liked as well. And I didn't like anything about Ayane's relationships at all. The first pairing, I did not see any chemistry there whatsoever. I have no idea why he liked her. It was just really weird to me. And then the second part of that, toward the end, I have no idea why she liked him. I mean, I could see more of the chemistry between them because it had been throughout the entire series, but I don't think enough time was spent on it to show how she transitioned to the way she was acting in the beginning to how she was acting in the end. Like, I did not understand why she suddenly had feelings for him at all. You could definitely see it coming, like, early on in the series. I saw it coming, but at the same time, it just it didn't feel organic enough. So I was not very happy with her whole situation. Kurumi is probably my favorite character. I love how she turned around later in the series. I never thought I would say that after watching the anime because the anime stops at like volume seven or something and this is a 30 volume series. There's so much more stuff that happens later on which is not fully necessary. I feel like this definitely was dragged out a little bit too much but I really loved Kurumi's arc. She grew to be such a strong character and I love how her focus shifted and how she was doing things more for herself rather than because she wanted a guy. And the way that she grows and learns to regret what she did, it was just so cute. And I love her relationship with Sawako. I think they're adorable and I love Kurumi so much. I think Sawako was a good lead and made for a lot of really nice morals and lots of learning experiences with her growing into herself and making friends with other people and experiencing love for the first time. I really like in the beginning how Kazehaya already likes her and so you get all of those cute little moments of like blushing tension. I love that so much. I need more of that in my life. If you know of any good shoujo series that have like that really adorable, they're both blushing and they both like each other but they haven't told each other yet, I need more of that. Please let me know. But other than that, I didn't really feel strongly about the main characters and I don't really feel strongly about the series as a whole either. It's definitely not one of my favorite series, but I think it's a good classic love story. As a side note, the final arc is about them going to university, so they were all studying for entrance exams and it actually like gave me a kick <laughs> to actually study for my own for grad school because I need to take the GRE and I've been putting it off because I am lazy. But watching them and all of the dedication they have and all of the study groups they were having and how much fun they were having studying together, I was just like, oh, I remember that from high school. I want to go back to that. And it actually made me start studying for my GRE, which was not something I expected from a shoujo manga. But uh, thank you very much because I definitely needed a kick in the pants to get my butt in gear. <laughs> I thought that whole section was really adorable, especially because you get a lot more of Kurumi and Sawako in that section and it was just so nice. I might actually end up going back to that 
portion of the story in the future, just when I need an extra kick to get myself motivated to actually study and further my career and enhance my life and all of those lovely things that apparently I still need to go through even though I'm not in high school anymore. Who would have thought? The end is pretty cheesy, but again, it's a shoujo romance. The whole thing is cheesy, so I can't really dock at any points for that. I think this is a good story. Again, not my favorite, but I would recommend it if you have an interest in it. Or if you need some palette cleansing after some kind of gross things. Maybe after some horror in October and you need something sweet and fluffy and nice. This would be a good series to pick up. Next, I read Tokyo on Foot by Florence Chavez. I don't know how to pronounce French names, I'm sorry. This is an art book of Tokyo neighborhoods, so it has like hand-drawn maps and buildings and houses and random architecture drawings, and they are so good. The architecture looks amazing. It's incredible. It was such an interesting view around the city, especially since I just visited recently and I can see where some of the places are. It's really fun to flip through and admire the artwork, but I would not recommend getting it digitally like I did. I got it as an ebook from the library and that was a bad decision because the text is very, very small. So on the little comments throughout the drawings, it's really impossible to read and the stupid kindle app doesn't zoom for whatever reason so i like couldn't read a lot of it so there's that also i think some of the two page spreads would have a lot more impact if you're looking at it physically rather than on a tiny little phone screen which is what i did and i made a mistake but i still really enjoyed this book and looking through it i think it's really beautiful and if you're interested in architectural art then i would pick it up next i read a properly unhaunted place by william alexander and this is a middle grade set in a world where ghosts are common among the living and you follow a little girl who is the daughter of an appeasement specialist whose job is to deal with unruly ghosts who are causing problems for the living. And in the beginning of the story, they move to a new town that doesn't seem to be haunted by any ghosts. And that's really weird in this world. So you follow her as she makes a friend and they work together to bring the ghosts back to this town. I'm starting to get into the fall spirit, so I wanted a bit of a spooky read, but I am an absolute wimp. So middle grade spooky is about the most I can do. So I started here. This was a fun, cute little story it was enjoyable but nothing too special. I don't normally read middle grade but I have read a few in the past and more recently and this was not one of the ones that I would say is really good middle grade. It's nice and it's fun and cute but it's not one of the best that I've read. It did work to give me some little spooky vibes though, so I'm still happy I read it. Especially so I can expand my horizons a bit, both into spooky genres and into middle grade, which I don't read very often. Then I finally, finally finished The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. It took me months to read this, oh my god. <laughs> this is the first book in the Wheel of Time series, which is a pillar of high fantasy. So many books take inspiration from it, but this book in particular it took a lot of inspiration from Tolkien. It's basically a carbon copy. <laughs> unfortunately, which made me not very excited to read this and part of the reason why I took so long to read this, the only way I got through this book was on audio. I was enjoying the concept in theory, but actually sitting down to read it was very, very tough. It's the start of a 14 book series and it opens up into this huge fantasy world with a bunch of different people, a bunch of different places, so much history, and it was just a lot to take in. I have some issues with the writing. Robert Jordan is known for his info dumps, and normally I don't really have a problem with info dumps. Yes, it's not the most creative way to get information across, but it is still useful. However, in this book there are so many, so often, and so long and detailed that I could not keep track of everything, and at that point it was really frustrating because there was so much information that I wanted to keep in my head, but because there was so much, I couldn't remember it all. And then it felt like I was sort of missing parts of the story and I was missing part of the background of the world. And that was really annoying because I want to be able to make all the connections and I want to be able to understand everything that's happening. But when there's just 
huge texts like you're sitting in a class about the history of this world, it's really hard to keep it all straight and keep track of everything and remember it and how it applies to the modern day as well. It's just, it was a lot. It was a lot. Also, you suddenly get a shift in the point of view like halfway through the book, which I was not expecting at all because you were in one person's perspective for half the book, which is like, what, 400 pages? And then it suddenly shifts to someone else and I was like, oh, what? We're, we're in someone else's head now? That's really weird. And then I also found that he would repeat certain details a lot. So when we were in Rand's head, and anytime he had to talk to a girl, his first thought was like, oh, I wish Perrin was here. Perrin's good with girls. Oh, Perrin's good with girls. He would know what to do. Oh, why am I not like Perrin? Perrin knows what to do with girls. And I was like, yes, we get it. You're bad with girls. Find some other way to say that rather than saying the same line six different times throughout the story. It was very annoying. I had also heard that the magic is supposed to be very well thought out. It's a hard magic system, I believe, but nothing <laughs> was really explained in this book. Maybe, I mean, it's a 14 book series again. This is just the first book, so you're not gonna get all of the answers, but at the same time, it didn't feel like anything was explained at all. And I don't know if that's just me not picking up on it because there's so much I felt like went over my head in this, especially because I was taking so long to read it and I was reading it in small chunks in between other books, so I probably forgot a lot of things, but I'm pretty sure we didn't get any sort of methodology for like how the one power works or anything. And it was just hand wavy and I don't know the limits of it. I don't know how it works. And normally that wouldn't really be a problem except that I was told that it's a very well-structured and well thought out magic system and I just didn't get that. So all of these things didn't really make it the most pleasant read, but I have been told that you need to read the first three books in this series before you decide if you want to stop it or not because this book was very much following Tolkien's style and then later on is when he starts getting into the story that he actually wanted to tell and I know like the fourth and fifth books are supposed to be really really good and the last books are supposed to be really good and there's also like a sort of slump in the middle, but I don't, I don't know. This is such a huge series and it's so influential that I definitely still want to read the entire series, if only to see where modern writers are getting their inspiration from. So didn't much like this book, but I will be continuing and we'll see how it goes from there. And the last book I finished, I was also kind of meh about. <laughs> It's A Reaper Man by Terry Pratchett. This is the 11th book in the Discworld series and the second book in the Death mini series as part of the Discworld series. I am reading all of Discworld in publication order. I know a lot of people don't recommend it that way, but I'm doing it that way. I started already, so I'm gonna do it. So this book is about the character of Death dying. So without a death in the Discworld, everything that dies is getting kind of stuck in this middle plane of existence and it's causing a lot of havoc as you can imagine. And so this whole book is just trying to figure out what to do about that. I read this in two sittings, basically my two plane rides this past weekend going home and back again. And even though I read it pretty quickly, I was still confused. I didn't really know what was happening and I felt like the plot was moving really, really slowly. There were things that were being mentioned as he does in his sort of really sporadic way of hopping around different places on the Discworld and giving you little bits of things that are happening in places other than where your characters are. And so he'd keep coming back to a certain thing that kept happening around the Discworld, but it was making absolutely no sense and it was so frustrating because I couldn't figure out what was happening and it took forever for any answers to be found. Even though it's a pretty short book, it felt like forever. It felt like ages before I figured out what was actually happening, which just made me kind of annoyed with the book. And then I wasn't really caring for the characters because I was like, okay, yeah, but I want to know what's actually happening. Like, what are you trying to solve here? So that was really frustrating. The characters were fine. I just didn't really feel too connected to them for some reason. Something about this book just felt off to me and I think it was just the pacing. Plus the whole plot is kind of a bit of a stretch, so it was weird. I didn't really like it very much. Not my favorite Discworld book, but I will be continuing. I brought a bunch of Discworld books back from my home this past weekend because these are all my dad's books. He read them when he was a kid and so I'm reading them now and I have a lot more of the series on my shelf now so it's more available to me. I am missing a few because he doesn't have every single book so I will have to get those from the library but I have 
a lot more and I will hopefully be reading them very soon. And that's it. We're done. Oh my god, I felt like so much. I've been talking so long and I have not filmed in quite a while actually. I did film my impromptu bookshelf tour when I was home this last weekend. It's actually the video that would have went up last week and it took me forever to do that as well because I just didn't know how to talk and I still don't know how to talk and this is taking me forever and I am so tired and at this point I'm just rambling and I don't know why so I'm gonna go and read oh I was gonna say <laughs> I intended to participate in the Avatar The Last Airbender readathon I had a TBR set up for it and everything for literally all of the prompts and then I didn't end up filming that TBR because my boyfriend was playing video games and making noise so I couldn't film anything. So I put my TBR for my team, The Earthbender, on my Twitter and then I read only one of those books and that was Tokyo on Foot. And I didn't read the other ones so that was a complete fail. I don't think I've ever failed at a readathon so hard as I failed this one which was unfortunate. The whole beginning of this month I was not reading at all. I had no desire to read and I don't know why that was. It was the longest stretch of time I'd gone without reading all year. And yet I still had all of these books to talk about which makes absolutely no sense but either way I am out of that reading slump now. I am back to reading and hopefully next time the Avatar readathon comes back around I'll actually be able to participate properly. <laughs> Let me know if there's any interesting readathons coming up in October. I've been seeing a lot of read-alongs and stuff for November, but I don't think that's really what I want to do. So we'll see. I'm so behind in booktube videos. I'm so behind in everything. I don't... <sighs> I need to get my life together, man. I need to take my GRE. I need to catch up on booktube. I need to read some more. So much to do. So little time. And the holidays are coming up. So we're gonna have to do a lot of preparing and now I'm just getting stressed. All right, I'm gonna go because this has gone on way too long and I will see you later. Bye. By going to the most prestigious, <laughs> prestigious lift. <laughs> It's set in an Asian-inspired fantasy place, place? Fantasy land. I loved seeing the character development in the side characters for the main characters, character development. Wow, how many times can I say character? By Mengo Yoyogo. By Karo Hoshina. Karo Kaku. By Karo Ho. So I turned to Kimi no Todoke. Shavo? Shavo? I'm tired. So, oh.